Hello and welcome to the first non-live stream video on the Technical Roundup YouTube channel. A huge thank you to everybody who's been tuning into the live streams every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 7 in the evening UTC. We'd love to see you there if you don't join us regularly. Good place to hang out and ask questions. We do a lot of good stuff there. So thank you to those who've been hanging out with us live. If you're here for the pre-recorded stuff, Thank you very much as well. Make sure to hit the like on the video, but also subscribe to the channel. So no matter what type of content is your cup of tea, be it the pre-recorded stuff or the live stuff, you can enjoy our content. Last little plug in terms of the description box, technicalroundup.com, our weekly newsletter, which comes out every Tuesday at 8 p.m. UTC. That's freely available and also sponsored by Bybit. Thank you very much. Uh, go sign up, subscribe. There's no upselling weird stuff going on there. It, it is just a free newsletter that Donald and I write together. So there's some good stuff there if you just want the levels, for example, and none of this rambling. Enough said, I thought for the first video it would be a good idea to kind of run through, link both the BTC pair and the USD pair, talk about the technicals, key levels, give you a kind of roadmap. So no matter what happens, I don't need to pepper you with updates and you have a rough understanding of where the market's at and where the important areas are. We're going to look at the BTC pair and the USD pair, so regardless of whichever you trade uh, or however you, I suppose, value or track your portfolio, you'll know what's up. So let's get straight into it. Monthly time frame. Looks good. Number go up. Strong uptrend. That's the crazy thing about Link. Um, it really picked up and has been completely, uh, you know, unaffected by the two-year plus, arguably still ongoing, altcoin bear market. Didn't really care, just kept going, and it is still going, so no time frame makes that as clear as the monthly time frame, at least in comparison to Bitcoin, but also the USD pair, surprise, surprise, is no different. The weekly time frame, we can actually start doing some analysis here. There's been an important shift. I mean, look, uptrend, number go up, still market structure bullish. I'm sure whatever moving averages or system you use for directional bias, it's, it's positive. Nothing's been broken yet. It's just been going up. One interesting shift that I will mark is that in previous uh, trend continuation setups, the market would at least roughly pull back to the area um, where the trend was broken or where market structure have shifted and offered continuation in that area. So, I mean, just kind of eyeballing it here, pulled back to the pre-breakout level, similar thing happened here. Um, you know, if I to use this swing high, similar thing happened here. It's not perfect. We were not writing TA textbooks at the end of the day, but you can see there's a general... Um, propensity to one, once the level's broken and market structures shifted, some sort of high time frame, that's important, high time frame pullback uh, before continuation in the trend, right? And again, this is curve fitting to some extent, wicks, bodies, doesn't really matter too much. But more importantly, um, with the last two legs or so uh, on the high time frames, that kind of pullback has not been materializing. The market's not been so generous and has simply been moving too quickly for that to take place. You can see even if I use the wick and the body here, um, the retest did not occur. And if I do a similar thing here, um, no pullback to structure yet. So that's an important shift. There is a video on the channel which talks about trading strong trends. That's one of the live streams. Uh, go watch. It's, you know, the whole stream is essentially dedicated to that. And it could be a video topic in the future. If you want to hear that, uh, leave a comment in the description. Not in the description, you can't do that. Leave a comment on the video and uh, I'll be sure to gauge sentiment. But this is just worth being aware of in terms of your expectations when it comes to trading this thing. Certainly if you're high time frame focused, that the market is not in its current form, doesn't seem to be terribly keen to pull back to where we'd like it to before it moves uncomfortably higher, certainly if you're not on board the move, okay? Another kind of technical structure that I think it's worth familiarizing yourself with, both if you're trading link, but also just strongly trending instruments generally, is this price pattern, essentially, where you get a strong impulse of move in a market, ideally through a key level or through an area of market structure, or basically a high time frame move that matters for one reason or another. Then you get a consolidation, a range, right? And then continuation, from that range. So you can see impulse, consolidate, and then impulse again. And the important bit within this type of structure is the consolidation itself. That consolidation, which preceded, or sorry, which followed, and then preceded uh, impulsive moves in the market, especially ones that lead to uh, continuation in the same direction, they themselves, these ranges, these boxes, become technically significant structures. Uh, and they're very useful for directional bias because we know that if the market pulls back into the box, 
Uh, it's the range, you know, because it's an old range, it's the top and the bottom of the range that are fantastic tools, both for trading within the range from range high to range low, but also for setting directional bias, which is generally bullish above the range high slash if it gets reclaimed and bearish below uh, the range low if it breaks down. Okay, and then also the boundaries is again where the best trade ideas are generated. You'll often see analysts just draw like a massive box and say this is support. Sometimes they do that because, I mean, for comfort purposes, but often uh, they get a bit of a tough run because it's really the top and bottom of the boundary that matters, not the whole thing. No one's trying to just draw a huge box and capture all market movement forever. So with that said, where is the first such structure on link on the weekly time frame? Well, you can see just drawing it here. Um, between 87 and 74k sats, if, if we're using uh, Binance metrics here, that's the first real high time frame weekly structure on link that I think is high time frame support. Okay, does that mean the market has to pull back uh, to this area? Absolutely not. As, as we've seen in previous breakouts, uh, it, sometimes it just does, doesn't happen. Okay, and hasn't happened yet. But in terms of if the market starts or continues. Uh, to move lower and again, there's no real evidence of that at the moment But this is supposed to act as roadmap. So bear with me. We're gonna be covering a lot of hypotheticals uh, You know, there's weekly and high time frame support uh, at the at these two levels if drawing a box helps you out Absolutely go for it. I'm just gonna draw two levels so you can hopefully see uh, what the price exact price levels are on the chart itself Okay, and then the only other um, Link level that I think I'm gonna draw on the weekly time frame is the old range so highest close here and then let's just kind of go for uh doesn't really matter too much uh this previous consolidation that preceded this leg so two technical structures the most recent consolidation that preceded or led to if you're the causal kind of guy uh this move up and then should that fail we have the old kind of high time frame range before link went absolutely ballistic i mean all of this is kind of crazy but i mean the, the real vertical breakout um this range is expected to act as support slash resistance as well. So what does that mean for our weekly plan? Well, it means that any pullbacks into this area are technically pullbacks into support. And again, the best area is to do business either at the range high or either at the range low. I can make a separate video. Again, leave a comment if you're interested in the kind of setups I like to look for at these boundaries, but generally some sort of fall back within the range and reclaim of the range high, that's very positive or an attempted breakdown below the range low, which then fails and gets reclaimed, uh, that's also very positive. So basically bullish price action, whatever that means to you, I've just given a couple examples there, uh, at the boundaries would certainly be positive and suggestive of trend continuation. Now, if we get a real breakdown of support within this cluster, that would suggest, again, would it be macro bearish? Uh, I don't think so. It would just mean that the consolidation has failed and price is going to retest a bigger level in the market, the kind of trend retest level, if you will, to confirm the uptrend, if you believe in that sort of stuff. Um, but there is a fair bit of space between the cluster at 78's failing and the retest of high time frame support back at 50k. So that's definitely worth being aware of, that if we get high time frame weakness below the lower boundary of this consolidation, so through slash below 74k, um, that would suggest the market needs a bit of a larger cool off and then we have to do business at the old range. Okay, that's just some weekly context. But for now, all we've had is an inside week in link, which basically means the price action of the preceding week is contained within the price action of, oh, sorry, within, yeah, one week is contained within the price action of the week before it. So that just means chop and ranging. And this current week, I mean, look, it's only, it's early days, but especially so, nothing really going on that's screaming for the market to trade lower into these levels. But the context is important. On the daily time frame, these consolidation structures we talked about are just as important. I'm going to keep these high time frame levels and you can see how they kind of align with those technical structures we discussed. Specifically on the weekly cluster, I mean, it's literally, you can draw a sub range, if you will, or a tighter daily range within the weekly range to get a sense of how important this area is. And you can start to see why the range low and, you know, the top and bottom of the boxes are the ones that matter. I do want to add some additional context on the daily time frame. That's where the market is right right now. Uh, using the same idea of these ranges before big moves, we can add two further levels. 
Now, whether you want to use candle bodies or wicks, all of that kind of stuff, I would say don't major in the minors. I generally will use candle bodies, but sometimes wicks give you give you better results. I don't have any strong views here, but just for the sake of simplicity, oops, I did not mean to do that. We have daily support at around 11k. As you can see here, basically this consolidation is currently doing its job. And then resistance would be the consolidation that preceded the kind of final bullish day, final green day in Link. And we can just simply draw that out here. Okay, closer to 14k. Yeah, 14k is a decent summary. You can see this and draw it on your own charts depending on your data feed. Okay, so right now, now that we've covered the high time from context, where is Link right now? Uh, there's nothing too scary going on. Uh, it's between levels. So we've got resistance closer to the 15k mark and support closer to the 12k mark, if you will, or mid 11k. And that's it. This is our range, right? This is the range in Link. Nothing too scary. Now, in terms of generating trade ideas, again, we are cognizant of high time frame uh, pullback areas. So that's something to be aware of. But in terms of right now, right now, especially if you're betting on trend continuation, which totally isn't unreasonable given how the monthly and the weekly time frames look, I think if resistance is broken slash reclaimed, so strength through the 15K area, uh, which gets bid on a pullback, so this level or this consolidation, which is currently causing trouble, essentially being flipped, uh, that would be a strong signal for continuation. Okay, and as the market starts pushing up and flips this level, um, these sellers or well, every, bears within this range feel discomfort and be offside. I think that would be enough to fuel a move, at least the swing high, but then uh, God knows where. Higher prices given we're sort of in price discovery territory anyway. So kind of bullish momentum continuation setup would be to get back above 14k as described. And at that point, I think this would just be the failed breakdown attempt in the trend uh, as there often is, and for the market to trade higher. In terms of bearish scenarios, um, I think for short term, as mentioned, Link is, because it behaves so well technically, level to level stuff is fine. So something like this, right? But a bit of context to be aware of is in a strong trend, you don't want to short or chase every single breakdown, especially if that breakdown occurs close to a high time frame or better uh, or more significant level of support. And that's for two reasons. One, because if the trend is strong, there's a good chance that the breakdown that you're selling is a is going to result in a failed breakdown and actually end up being a bullish setup. So just selling breakdowns in a strong uptrend generally isn't the best strategy. But also, too, um, you need to ask yourself, is it worth trying to catch the move, let's say, from A to B? And, you know, in terms of just the space between the two, sure, there's plenty for a trade. But do you want to be heavy short or at least, you know, positioned in that way into one of the best high time frame levels of support in an area um sorry in a very strong trend right now if you're some objective mechanical robot who says yes i know this is high time frame support therefore i will go a to b and you know that's where the trade is closed that's easy to do while the market you know is all the way up here and it's not trading anywhere close to those levels but trust me the amount of times where i've taken a counter trend trade and said yeah i know it's counter trend but i'll obviously close it at the level right and then what happens is the market comes into the level and I'm like, mm, I mean, it kind of still looks rough. Maybe I'll hold on to it. Maybe it'll just go a bit lower and hit this level. And then I get reversed on uh, pretty violently and pretty instantly, which looks obvious in hindsight because, hey, price tests at a high time frame level. But you kind of lose that sense of perspective if your PNL is flashing green and you're comfortably short from higher price. That's a bit of a, a psychological um, thing or danger to be aware of. So I think that's reasonably it for the BTC pair. We know where we are now between support and resistance. The bullish setup for continuation is pretty straightforward. Uh, something just needs to get reclaimed. Uh, I'm still fine trading this level to level. So again, from support to resistance or even from resistance to support. Given the trend is up, I'd much rather trend trade from support to resistance rather than vice versa. But again, I'm not going to try to model under every single possible trading system that could exist. If the market does offer a higher time frame pullback, I definitely wouldn't be ignoring um, these weekly levels. Okay, and only if they fail, which would be somewhat surprising, but you need to be ready for anything. If support fails, which again, not the whole box is support. For me, that would mean the lower boundary uh, falls out, okay, and acts as resistance or just doesn't provide any support. Then we have to potentially deal with a shift in trend, high time frame trend with Link, because we'll be retesting the macro uptrend level closer to 50k, okay? So 
if you don't want to entertain too many counterfactuals, if this, then this, and this means that, and everything, just trade at level to level, and I think you'll be uh, in a very good spot. Uh, but even in the level to level trading, uh, certainly until such a time that weekly support is broken, I would personally skew more towards buying support rather than selling resistance, but that's just my personal view. Here are the levels, you know the context, you know where we are now, and you're prepared for moves higher and lower, so hopefully that's helpful for the Bitcoin chart. If you learned anything or if that's uh, been of assistance or use to you, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. We'd love your support before we jump into the USDT pair. So, USDT pair, um, very similar, right, with the consolidations and the strong trend. You can see previously the market offered some sort of pullback. Um, I mean, this isn't great, but at least it spent more time here and the candle away uh, wasn't too insane. But since then, uh, nothing of the sort, just, just straight up. Okay, so levels that matter, we're just going to draw or add this weekly level. This is the equivalent to kind of link Bitcoin's 50k macro uptrend uh, retest level. So this lands at about four and a half dollars. Uh, the consolidation, hopefully this technical structure is second nature to you now, will be by the end of this video. The consolidation is between seven and a half and eight dollars and where the market is now, again, no, no fantastic reference point on this time frame. Now going to the daily time frame, you can see the, where the market is right now looks one to one essentially a structural uh, analog of where the Bitcoin chart is at, meaning you've got a pre breakout range, uh, which is acting as resistance around 16, well, $17. And then you've got the pre breakout support uh, range, sorry, the pre breakout range, which is currently acting as support. And again, I'm not making up these technical structures. Uh, you can see a clear case of that You get an impulsive move up through a key level, the market consolidates continues, and then you get a that level ends up being retested. If I add another circle here, this diagram will look very naughty. So I'm not going to do that. But that's where the market is at now. So surprise, surprise, this is our range between support around $13, resistance around $17. We can make the same technical inferences. If resistance is broken, something like this, the sellers below that level will feel uncomfortable. And that'll be enough, I think, to likely lead to uh, the swing high, but certainly, I mean, continued price discovery and the resumption in the trend uh, at that point as well. And in a similar vein, if support is broken, I think with, with this pair, that there's a bit more space until we reach uh, the high time frame level closer to $8. You can see there's like a big gap between $13 support and $8 being $8 being the next level. One thing I'd be cautious of, keep an eye on the BTC pair. If the BTC pair looks very bullish uh, at an interim level between these two, uh, the USD pair might also catch a bid. Okay, so I, I wouldn't be uh, rushing to sell it if sell the USD pair if the BTC pair looks bullish or has arrived at a nice technical level. Just some context to be aware of, especially now that you've got both charts and both levels, uh, that should be helpful. And also, we regularly update all the charts and levels in the newsletter. They're very clean there and you get the trading view link. So make sure you're signed up to that link features every single week. Um, Nothing to really add on the USD pair. Same thing. I think level to level is fine. Being long biased generally is fine, uh, given the higher time frames. Um, and if you're just on board for continuation, uh, the breakthrough 17 is probably the easiest or the easier trade on the table. If you're more of a technical guy or low time frame guy, I still think some sort of overextension, a failed break, uh, you know, an attempt to break through the 13 level, which then, you know, bearish retest, which fails, something like this uh, would still be also positive and uh, risk defined. So range until proven otherwise, if the market dips, the next level of support for me on the high time frame is around $8. But I would be cognizant if the market is floating between these two levels of the BTC chart to make sure that you're not selling high time frame support on that pair. I think that's all I've got. The levels, just quick recap, $16 to $17 on the USD pair resistance, $12 to $13 support, the next high time frame support, $7.5 to $8. And again, this isn't the box, it's the levels themselves that really matter. And then all the way down the macro bullish retest level closer to $4.5. And without reading them all out again, uh, here are the levels on the Bitcoin pair. That's all. I hope this analysis and roadmap for Link is helpful. It should keep, it should have you sorted for a long time to come and so you don't lose perspective or do anything too crazy. If you enjoyed the video, support us by coming into our live streams every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 UTC. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, any video requests given these pre-recorded videos are going to be a lot more often or a lot more frequent on the channel. Make sure you leave 
uh, feedback in the description below. Huge thank you as always to Bybit for sponsoring Technical Roundup, the newsletter as well as the YouTube channel. Their links you can see at the top. Show them some love and I will see you either in one of the live streams or in the next video. Thank you for watching.